In this video, I'm going to be taking a deeper dive into Secure Shell Access or SSH with Groove devices. I am again going to be using my Groove Epic Learning Center, but just be aware that this works for any Groove Epic or Groove Rio product. Now, in my last video, I went over how to obtain the Shell license, the free license, how to activate it for a specific device, and I ended with accessing the command line and doing a couple of basic things. This time I'll be taking it a bit further and showing some custom Python programming as well as how to manage the packages that you may need in order to go through that. So let's go ahead and get started. First, I'll log into my Groove Epic that I have right here with my Groove Manage username and password. And the first thing that I'm going to do when I get in here is I'm going to come into system and shell just to make sure that the SSH server is up and running. And we can see that it is. So I'm ready to go. With that, I'll bring open my SSH client. I'm using PuTTY today. And we'll see here that I already have a bunch of sessions saved. I'll select the one for my device, Epic Dev, and load it up. All you need to do is put in your host name or IP address and use port 22 over SSH. So I'll open this up and we can see here I have my command prompt. So let's log in now. And remember, this should be very different username and password to any of your Groove Manage accounts. It should be created uniquely for shell access. So my username is user and I'll put in my password. And here we go, we're in my device right now. So if I do PWD, yep, I'm in the home folder for this user I created and we're ready to get started. So again, I'll want access to the different scripts I'll be using. So I'll be using the unsecured file area that I can view under system and files. You'll see here are my unsecured files. And here's a simple hello.py file I created. So let's check that out in shell. So I'll do cd slash home slash dev slash unsecured. And if I do an ls, we'll see I've got the hello.py here. And if I wanted to check the contents of that, I can do that as well. You can see it's just going to import the sys library and print out hello world. So let's run it really quick. And there we go. It just does what it says it'll do. It just says hello world. So there we go. That's our basic Python program. Now we want to take it a step further and we want to actually access some of the IO on this device. So let's check what IO we have available. We're still going to keep these scripts in home dev unsecured. So we'll keep that in mind. We'll come back to home and view our IO. I'm going to keep things simple with just digital endpoints today, but you can use either inputs or outputs, analog or digital using this code. So we'll see here, I have this top toggle button. If I press it on, the LED turns on and it turns on to on in the software and I can toggle it off. And I also have this momentary button. So we're able to get our uh, results here through Groove Manage. And now we wanna be able to get them also in our code. So to, in order to do this, we're going to need some thing to get started with. And if you come over to developer.opto22.com, we have some great examples to help kickstart that starting process. Here you'll see under developing with Groove Epic, which also applies to Groove Rio, we can select that. And you'll see we have a whole section here on secure shell access. If you select getting started, you can see that we talk about shell access, the repositories, and provide some sample scripts. Let's check these out to get started today. I'll bring open our developer GitHub, and you can see we have all of these programs here, as well as some documentation on how to use them. Let's start by just using the RESTful API in order to access this digital point I have here on uh, module zero, index zero. So I'll be doing a REST read digital module channel value, and you can see here is the code right here. Now I could just copy and paste this into my shell, but let's upload it instead. So I'll view the raw page, I'll right click and select save as, and we do want to be saving it as a .py file. So I'll be doing .py, just saving it straight to my downloads. And now we'll be able to upload this through that unsecured file area. So let's bring that open, come into our system files, and just upload this file right here. We can see this under my downloads and select it. And when I open it up and load it in here, you can see I've got this, this REST read digital module channel, this 1.4K byte text file. So I'll bring open a shell once more, my command line, click ls, and you'll see that I have my rest read script right here. So let's uh, bring this open because we'll need to edit it just a little bit. 
And the reason for that is we are not going to be using our API key from another file. I'm just going to type it in directly to make this a bit easier. So our key is going to be equal to some string. So now I'll provide the API key. But rather than use the API key for my Groove admin account, I'm going to create a new user so that I can keep things separate. So I'll go back to home and we'll go under our accounts and you'll see that in my users, I only have one user, this Opto system wide administrator. So let's add a new one for secure shell access. So I'm just going to call this SSH user and this is going to be for my API access via shell. So I'll put in a password and we are going to make sure that this is a Groove Manage admin. So in order to do that, it will be a full admin. I can go ahead and select save. That'll allow me to access the Groove Manage API as well as Groove View, Node Red, etc. So I'll go ahead and select save. But now that I've created this user, if this API key becomes insecure, or I want to close out access via this user, I can go ahead and delete this one without damaging my Opto main system wide administrator account. Just good practice going forward. So with that said, I'll grab this unique API key, API key and copy that to my clipboard and I'll paste it here in my shell. So now my key is equal to this string. It's a unique device just for shell access and I can run this code now. So let's save this file, write it out and exit. And now I'm going to try to run it. So here we can see if I run my Python version, we can see that I do have Python. It's clearly working. I was able to run my hello world. We've got version 2.7.9. So let's use Python to run that uh, rest read digital module channel value. And we're going to be reading it at zero, zero. So I'll select enter and you'll see we hit a problem right away. There's no module named requests. and We do need to import requests in order to make HTTP requests. But no worries, we can handle this. We're just going to install the requests package. And the way the Python packages are managed are with a Python package manager called pip. So we'll first need to install pip, then we'll use pip to install our requests package, and then we'll be able to run this script. So since I do have a gateway to the internet, I can do this. I'll just clear this up so that we can start fresh. And I am going to uh, make sure that my package list is updated first. So I'll be doing sudo apt-get update. And this is just going to uh, make sure that I know what I'm doing first and foremost. And this is always an important thing to keep in mind when you are using shell for anything, but especially when you're using sudo to run commands as the root user. So always with great power, there must also come great responsibility. Just be careful what you do here because while sudo is extremely powerful, it's also extremely dangerous. So I'll Go ahead and put my password in, just being aware of what I'm typing. And we'll see that it's reaching out to archive.opto22.com and grabbing all of the packages for my processor, Groove Epic PR1, at the current firmware version 3.4. So now my package list is updated. I'll clear up this terminal again. And now we can install pip. So I'll do sudo apt-get install python pip and select enter. So I do want to use the additional space here. It's zero bytes, so we're all good to go. And it's reaching out to that spot in the repository that has Python pip. It's going to install it along with any dependencies and it's all done. So now if I do which pip, we'll see that pip is installed in my user bin. And if I do pip minus minus version, we'll see here that uh, we've got version uh, pip version 7.1.0 and it is associated with my python 2.7 uh, version of python here that's that's pre-installed i didn't have to install that so we're good to go with pip now let's use pip to install that request packages so we'll go ahead and clear one more time so now that my package list is updated we're going to go ahead and use pip to install that requests package so i'll just type in sudo pip install and I want to get the requests library and I'm going to get it for my Python version 2.7. So I'll just go ahead and tap enter and it's going to go out to the Python package index, grab that requests library, uh, bring it into my device and there we go. I've successfully installed requests uh, for, for my Python 2.7. So now if we do ls, we're still here with my uh, 
rest command. So I'll do that command again, Python rest read digital module channel. Uh, I'm going to be reading module zero at channel zero and I'll select enter and you'll see that it's returned uh, the boolean false. If I toggle that on and run this command again with the up arrow, we'll see that it's now true and let's get it back to false one more time. And there we go, it's back to false. So it's really easy to uh, get the packages that you need to run specific code using the Python package manager pip. And we've been able to do this because we installed that package, provided our API key, and we're all set to go. But RESTful isn't the only way that you can get data to and from your I.O. Let's try another way. We're going to use the Opto MMP Python library that uses Opto's memory mapped protocol to communicate. So I'll go ahead and clear this up because we're gonna switch gears a little bit here. So in order to use this, we will need to install the opto MMP library. So let's do that next. We'll do sudo pip install opto MMP and tap enter. So this is going to go out and get that opto MMP library. And then I'll just write a really simple script uh, in order to use opto MMP to do this. So I'm going to do nano and I'm just gonna call it mmp.py, keep it simple. So now we will need to import that opto MMP library that we just installed, and I will import sys so that I can print to the screen. Now it's pretty straightforward. Uh, I just need to create a connection to my epic. So that's going to be epic is equal to, and we'll create a opto MMP communication device, which is done with the O22 uh, MMP. And we won't provide a host name or IP address to this function because we're running it on localhost. I'll drop down and we're just do, going to do a print epic.getDigitalPointState. And we're going to be getting it for that zero, zero point. Then we just need to close our connection, epic.close. And that's all we need to do in order to write a just really simple program using this library uh, to read this point. So we'll save this and we'll do python mmp.py and click enter. And this time we're not doing any interpretation of the result to turn it into true or false. We're just getting a one or zero back in this case. So if I toggle it on and run this again, we'll see it's switched to one and once more back to zero. So you have multiple ways that you can communicate with your I.O., whether it's RESTful through MMP, or you can even use MQTT to communicate with other devices or even use it locally. So these are just some approaches that you might want to take, the packages that you'll need, and how to manage those packages. If you want to learn more about this Opto MMP library, you can just head over to that GitHub. You'll see that there's all the files here. And if you come back up to Opto Developer and select Opto MMP, you'll see that it has some documentation on all of the different functions here. We can access all of the scratchpad areas, analog and digital IO, ethernet status, and um, other things like that, as well as some miscellaneous information like the firmware version, unit description, and last error. So this is a great library to help you get started without having to write too much code or understand a ton of what's happening behind the scenes with the memory mapped protocol. With all of these, you may still have some questions, so you can come on over to our forums at forums.opto22.com, and we do have an SSH section that you can uh, put your posts in specifically, and we're always having more conversations here. So come on over and check it out. I hope you found this video helpful. Thanks for watching.